Hi, my name is Herman Middleton and welcome to the Protecting Veil YouTube channel, which is all about understanding our Orthodox Christian faith better so we can live it more deeply. In order to do this, I started to produce videos for something I call the Collective Wisdom Project. Today's video comes from an interview I conducted in early 2017 with Father Michael Alexa when he came to the area to give some lectures. Father Michael is a talented storyteller. He has served as a village priest, as a university professor, and has written a number of books on Alaskan culture and history, uh, in particular the classic work uh, Orthodox Alaska. So I hope you'll enjoy this episode uh, from my interview with Father Michael. We believe, as Orthodox Christians, that the Spirit of God is everywhere present and fills all things. The Church does not have a monopoly on the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has already been everywhere long before the Christian Gospel came. The, the Jewish people had their prophets and were expecting the coming of the Messiah for thousands of years. And in a certain sense, that's true of every indigenous tribe. There is some sense in which God has revealed himself to them in his own particular way, in their own particular environment. And I would say that the missionaries were wise enough to, um, to come into Alaska, their bishop said, as guests in another man's house. So as they settled into Kodiak, where they, the first mission arrived in 1794, um, they spent the first eight or nine months simply listening to the stories that the Aleutic people were telling about what they already did know or believe about God. And they were kind of astounded that they already believed that there was one supreme being, a creator of heaven and earth. They believed in uh, the origin of human beings as all descended from the same original father and mother. They didn't call them Adam and Eve, but they had the idea that all human beings are descended, members of the same family, ultimately brothers and sisters, one to the other. They had deduced, I would say, more than received the revelation of most of the Ten Commandments. Of course, most tribal peoples have done that. I mean, you can't live together in harmony in a community if people are stealing from each other, if people are swiping wives, if people are uh, uh, coveting property, if people are committing acts of violence. So not to kill, not to steal, not to lie, those are pretty much human values, no matter what culture you're in, what, what tribe. Um, of course, they didn't have, you know, to keep the Sabbath day, because they had no concept of that. But by and large, the missionaries said, these people have at least the outlines of the Old Testament already given, and we can work with this. They even had flood stories. It's amazing how many uh, tribal peoples have stories of a flood that inundated the, the world, and people drowned, and sin was expunged and so forth. That, those are pretty much universal stories. So they started with that and then going deeper among the Yupik people, for example, St. Yaakov realized that these people believed that every living thing has within it, I don't know what to, in, the, in Yupik it's called the Yua, Y-U-A. The Yua of a thing is that which makes it what it is. The Greeks would say it's its logos. And that presence of the UI is what makes it alive. If it's a living thing, it's alive because of the UI within it. Uh, it makes a bird a bird, it makes a tree a tree, it makes a human being a human being. And each person has their own unique UI. There are no two that are exactly alike, but they all, they all contain this life force. They might have conceived of it more as an electricity or an energy, but it flows through all of nature and every living thing has its own, and it needs to be treated with reverence. It's a sacred reality. The life force in you and the life force in me and the life force in the animals and in the plants, it has to be treated with a kind of reverence. It's something I think the Greek fathers understood. They have a, a sense of respect or honor, and certain things need to be respected and honored. 
honor your father and your mother. It's a commandment. Um, respect graves. Don't just walk into a place of burial and treat it like it's nothing. It's a, it's a place that deserves respect. Um, respect the flag. There's certain symbols that need to be respected. That's sort of at the minimum level. Then there's veneration. Veneration is a couple notches higher. Um, veneration is what you, what you treat as, as a sacred thing. In the church, we clearly have this in the sense of the veneration of the icons, the veneration of the hand cross uh, or the cross, the veneration of the gospel book. It's a, it's a notch higher, well, even the, of the chalice, of anything re related to the sacraments. And then there's worship. And only God deserves worship, and only God should be treated with the utmost respect. You, with worship, you fall flat on your face. You bow down to the ground. As we say in the services, come let us worship and fall down before Christ. That's, only Christ deserves that. But there's respect, veneration, and worship. I would say the native people have at least the first two sense, honoring certain things, respecting certain things, and then they also have within their natural environment a sense of veneration. And the veneration extended to almost any living thing. Um, certainly all the animals, and absolutely every human. <laughs> every human needs, needs to be treated not just with respect, but especially elders need to be treated with a sense of reverence. The, the elders don't just know things, they've embodied them. An elder is not just an elder because they live to be a long, a long, a long life, live to be old. An elder is an elder because they've become a kind of ideal personality. They've become patient the way the old stories tell, tell us to be patient. They become forgiving the way the old stories, legends, and myths teach human beings. You see, they They've not just taught the stories and repeated the stories, they've come to embody the stories, to make those values incarnate, you could say. And, I, and I, that's one of the reasons I stayed in Alaska so many years. I was intrigued to meet older people who were qualitatively superior to almost any other people I'd ever met. They were kinder than most people I'd ever met. They were more patient than any. They were more forgiving. They were more loving. They were more generous. You could make the list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And these elders were all those things. And they were illiterate. They hadn't learned these things from books. They had learned it because this was the wisdom that was passed down through the ages in the stories, myths, and legends of the tribe. And obviously the missionaries thought, wow, this is extraordinary. We thought we are going to enlighten these people and bring them to a higher level of spirituality, but in many ways they are already superior to us. And so you could enter into a kind of dialogue with people of this, this cultural background. What did... Hi again. Hope you enjoyed this episode from my interview with Father Michael Alexa. Please subscribe to get notified when new videos become available, which happens every Friday. And if you would, please leave a comment below letting me know what you thought of this video. Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next week.